It has been over 931 days since the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro was released. Yes, the G2 was released after that, but that wasn't really a new camera and more of just a more budget option to the 6K Pro. And although the camera is far from brand new at this point, it's oftentimes still compared to the latest cameras that are coming out, and it still remains a very popular option amongst budget cinematographers. However, it finally seems like rumors are really starting to brew for what the next Blackmagic camera is going to be. In this video, I wanna talk about those rumors, and as someone who has been shooting on Blackmagic for essentially the past decade, I want to insert my two cents on each of those rumors and why I think they will happen, they won't happen, good idea or bad idea. But of course, this is a community, so please feel free to leave your comments and opinions down below as well. And make sure you stick around because one of the rumors we're talking about later on is one of the most debated ones out there. So one of the biggest reasons that everyone thinks the Blackmagic is extremely close to being announced and released is because it would seem that Blackmagic is going to join the L-Mount Alliance. Now this is an alliance between Leica, Sigma, Panasonic, DJI, and a couple other brands that have all joined forces basically trying to create a singular lens mount. Now the purpose of this is to create a better experience for consumers and prosumers because there's nothing more frustrating than buying a bunch of Canon lenses just to then want to switch to like the Sony FX3 and realize all your lenses now don't work. So these camera and lens companies are coming together to all support the Leica mounts, which means that you can switch between all these different camera brands and still use the same lens as you bought. For a lot of people, this would be a huge plus side for Blackmagic. So let's talk about what this next Blackmagic camera is most likely going to look like. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know in every Blackmagic video, we have talked about the Q, the Q camera. camera. Basically Blackmagic's version of a red Komodo or a Z cam. And based on these rumors, still not gonna get our box camera, but it seems like it's heading at least a little bit in that direction. The latest rumors suggest that the visual of the camera is gonna be smaller than the existing 6K Pro, but larger than an FX3. It really seems like the Sony FX3 has affected sales and just the overall like kind of change the prosumer market in terms of what a compact cinema camera can really have inside of it and the power that it can punch. Now it's said to still have a large rear screen, which if you look at the Sony FX3, uh, not really fitting much there. So it definitely makes sense that it's gonna be larger than an FX3 body. But this also means that we're not going to get that Komodo style body because if you had a true box shape on the very back is where a battery or batteries would go. Now I do hope it's a flip around screen so that way us content creators don't have to have a second monitor mounted and HDMI cables and all that good stuff. That would be beautiful. Now just so you guys know, in case you wanna go read the article or check out the original creator's video that actually talked to a source, but Andre Pizzini, probably butchering that terribly. I'm sorry, Michelle's way better at Italian than I am. His video and article really combines a lot of the rumors that are from various sources into one nice place. So I'll leave that linked in the description below. Anyways, back to the camera. It's rumored that it's going to have more mounting holes on it, basically similar to, again, the FX3. What's awesome is if this rumor is true, then that means another thing, that the body of the camera is going to be substantially stronger. When you pick up an FX3, it feels like it's built like a tank. The body of the Pocky cameras has always been like a, okay, I see where they saved the money on this. So you can't take really the existing plastic shell of the pocket and just add a bunch of quarter 20s and expect that to be a strong, durable thing they can mount a bunch of stuff to. Even the quarter 20 on top is only intended, if you look at the user manual, to have things like light microphones or very light accessories. You are not supposed to attach like a top handle to it. So if they're putting a bunch of mounting points, it means most likely a much stronger body, which I am all for. At launch, it's probably going to come out with the same or similar 6K Super 35 sensor. However, there is a rumor that down the road, we will get a full frame option, which would be amazing. And I love having both options because the Super 35 is gonna be a great option to stay in the budget realm, but then a full frame option being a little bit more expensive, probably a couple grand more. A lot of professionals will happily pay that extra to get the full frame sensor. The camera is rumored to continue not to have any sort of internal stabilization or IBIS, which I think is incredible. I hate IBIS 
constantly shifting the compositions. I don't like it. What I do like is an improvement to the gyro stabilization. Everyone was super excited when they announced gyro stabilization and added that into DaVinci Resolve. To be honest, up until this point, it's kind of disappointing. I think the other digital stabilization methods work better most of the time. So I would love to see an improved gyro support. In terms of resolution and frame rates, it's looking like it's going to be able to do 6K up to 75 VSPS, which is a nice bump from 50. And yay, 4K, 140 frames per second, up from the 2.8K at 120. Those resolution and frame rates really seem like a nice bump and feels much more 2023 friendly compared to the specs currently in the 6K Pro. It's rumored to have an OLED screen on the back, which cool. Personally, I have no complaints about this screen on the back of the camera currently. It's 1500 nits. It's incredibly bright. I have no problem seeing it in broad daylight. I think it's fantastic. If it goes OLED, cool. If not, if it remains the same, I'm great. Since the camera most likely will be physically smaller, CFast is probably gonna be too big of a media. So it looks like they're gonna go with the now more popular CF Express Type B cards which cool, but unfortunately for all of us who have invested a lot of money in CFast memory. <sighs> now what's not rumored, and of course the biggest question is what is the price of this camera going to be? A lot of people are suggesting it will remain under that 5K price point just to remain competitive to the other popular cameras. I definitely think it's gonna be under the 5K price point based on Blackmagic's history and the fact that you can get the Ursa 12K, which is a much beefier camera for just $1,000 more than that, 6K, $6,000, not 6K resolution. Personally, if I had to place a small bet, I would throw out there that I think the camera is gonna start at $3,500 for a Super 35 sensor version. If there is a uh, full frame version that would come out, I'm gonna guess 5K for that one, 49.95 or something like that. So let's talk about the most debated and either people want it or they don't care rumor and that is autofocus. Now I haven't seen any, you know, highly credible source person say it will or won't have autofocus. So let's talk about the various options they could go with. Of course, one is no autofocus of any kind, which I personally believe is the most likely option. I don't think this next camera is going to have autofocus in it. Now, if you watch previous videos, I would say, I don't care, it's a cinema camera, I want manual. However, after almost six months of shooting on the Ronin 4D and having LiDAR autofocus, again, as a content creator, not even just content creator, as someone who is like doing events or shooting people who are fast moving while you're doing camera moves, it is nice having autofocus to make sure your focus stays nice and sharp as a solo operator. So I would love to see autofocus, I just don't think we're going to. Now they could start with their first generation, good old phase detection, contrast. A lot of people suggest they'll probably go something like the Ronin 4D route since they're in the cinema world and go with LiDAR autofocus. If they go this route, I really hope it's not a separate thing, not just because of the extra cost, but just the hassle and annoyance to set those things up. Now, LiDAR on the Ronin 4D is a fantastic experience because it's tightly built together. And the way the 4D is built, I mean, it's not really a compact camera setup anyway, so having a little LiDAR sensor on top of the lens isn't that big of a deal. However, for a smaller mirrorless camera type setup, it'd be really annoying. And again, I have the DJI RS3 Pro with the LiDAR attachment, so I've used the LiDAR on my Pocket 6K Pro and having something that is separate, it's more cables. You have to calibrate every single lens that you wanna use with it. I don't know, they could prove me wrong with an excellent experience, but I think it's gonna be way more of a hassle. I'd rather just almost have no autofocus, to be honest. However, if they went with something like the iPhone, which has built-in LiDAR right next to the camera lens, that could be something that's really interesting. They could have it off to the side of the camera. I don't really know how that would work, but if they could build in LiDAR to where you just attach a lens, you calibrate it, that would be pretty sweet. Now, while we wait for the announcement of the next Blackmagic camera, I'm curious, would you guys be interested in me testing the now a couple year, handful of year old 6K Pro up against something like the Sony FX3? Let me know, like this video, get it up to 250 likes and I'll create that comparison video. Don't forget to get subscribed. We've got a ton of iPhone 15 camera videos right around the corner. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.